Thousands of Turkish women are expected to protest later today against Turkey leaving an international convention on violence against women. Human rights groups say that the move sends, quote, a reckless and a dangerous message to perpetrators and has set Turkey back on women's rights. I'll be speaking with a human rights lawyer about the situation in Turkey in just a moment, but first, this report. She looks anxiously out the window. Are there any suspicious cars parked out front? Is anyone standing by the entrance? This is Janzu Erki's daily routine. The 31-year-old and her son rarely leave their apartment in the western Turkish city of Bolu anymore. Not since receiving death threats from her own husband. I'm going to kill all of you. I will slaughter you with a blunt knife. The kid stays with me, you whore. Do you understand? Jansu continuously receives threats like this, and she knows he means every word. Before she left him, he had abused her for years. He even beat her mother. The police did nothing apart from advising Jansu to seek protection at a women's shelter. Meanwhile, her abuser feels perfectly safe. He told me, if I kill you, I'll go to prison for three years. But that won't stop me. After three years, I'll be back out. Jansu doesn't believe the Turkish state will protect her. Instead, she's turned to the public. On Turkish media, she's spoken out against her abuser and the Turkish authorities' failure to act. A bold move, especially now that Turkey has withdrawn from the Istanbul Convention, protecting women from violence. President Erdogan justified this step by repeatedly claiming that the convention served to spread Western notions of emancipation. We will not let foreigners influence the way we deal with the issue. We have our own historical and cultural ways. We will not allow the safety of our families to be jeopardized. These women are demanding the protection of their families too, but in a different way than Erdogan envisioned. They are pressuring Turkey to respect the international agreement. In the past year, 300 women were murdered and another 117 women died due to unknown causes. Now, Turkish women are fighting back, literally. More and more women are signing up for self-defense courses like these. Here, Krav Maga, an Israeli martial art, is being taught. The women in this class have had enough of violence and harassment from men. The course leader has observed mostly young women in her group. More and more 25 to 35 year old women come to us. Not all participants have experienced physical violence. Some just want to know how to react to harassment. They just don't want to put up with that kind of behavior anymore. Jansu Erki has found another way to protect herself. She's installed a security door in her apartment to prevent her abusive husband from breaking in. But she knows if he's determined to kill her, he will. He told me himself. He said, look, Uncle Erdogan has withdrawn from the Istanbul Convention protecting women. So we can kill as many women as we want without being punished. The Istanbul Convention should continue to be respected in our country. It was the only thing that deterred men. Growing solidarity among women in Turkey is also acting as a deterrence. Jansu experienced an outpour of support after she made her case public. Since then, the threats against her and her family have stopped. And let's get more on this. We are joined now by Tamar Dekana Sudse, a human rights lawyer with the NGO Equality Now. Welcome to the program and thank you for joining us. As we've heard, the Turkish government says it doesn't need the convention because the country's laws protect women. What's your reaction? Hello, thanks so much for having me in this program. Well, 
the withdrawal from the Istanbul Convention is a very negative step and it indeed undermines the protection of women from violence in Turkey. Turkey indeed has a legal framework that protects women from violence, but that legal framework is not adequate. It requires a lot of improvement to make sure that women are protected from all forms of violence, not only on paper, but in real life. And the monitoring mechanism of the Istanbul Convention Grevio in 2018 flagged a number of inconsistencies and a number of gaps in the legislation of Turkey in its policy, judicial practice and procedures failing to protect women against violence. And now with this move of withdrawing from the convention, Turkey sends a powerful message to the world that women's rights are already well protected under a local framework in Turkey. It does not require any improvement. It does not require taking any additional measures, which okay. is indeed true. And and we just saw, I mean, to, to illustrate also your point, of course, we just saw in, in that report, the husband of, of the woman explicitly referring to Turkey's withdrawal from the Istanbul Convention saying it was essentially a green light for, for him to, to kill her, in fact. What do you think when you hear stories like that? Well, this situation clearly demonstrates that the situation of women's rights and violence against women in Turkey, which is already very worrying, not, not, will not only improve, but it will worsen. And the persons who are responsible for protecting women from violence, people in the government, people in the law enforcement, will indeed rely on the withdrawal of Turkey from the Istanbul Convention as the evidence of the lack of political will of the government to provide sufficient support to women, and it will indeed encourage the perpetrators. It does send a message to perpetrators that violence against women is not a significant issue. It's not a human rights violation, and the abusers will indeed enjoy widespread impunity. For years, there has already been a large-scale impunity of perpetrators. For, uh, who committed violence against women in Turkey. And it's particularly depressing that the situation will only worsen because of the I, move of the government of Turkey to withdraw from the Women's Rights Convention. I, I have to ask you then, um, in, in that context, um, you know, we have heard that, that there is a protest, for example, that is planned for today. Um, a lot of women also taking self-defense into their own hands. We've seen those illustrations. In your opinion, what can be done to push back against the erosion of women's rights, which should be done right now? I think what should be done in Turkey and around the world is that we should all stand in solidarity with the women in Turkey who are protesting against Turkey's withdrawal from the Istanbul Convention. And we do need to stop the movement of widespread backlash against the Istanbul Convention that not only originated in Turkey, but in other parts of the world, other countries of the Council of Europe. Uh, there are far-right conservative groups and forces who are interested but in not ending impunity for violence against women, and we should counter this narrative and myths and stereotypes surrounding Istanbul Convention, which are not true. Thank you so much for joining us, Tamar Dekanozidze from Equality Now. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks a lot.